how will Africa look like in 2030? Africa is projected to see the largest increase in the size of its population in the coming 15 years. Right now, Africa has 1.2 billion inhabitants, and according to the UN, by the year 2030, the population will have doubled to over 1.8 billion. Africa alone will account to more than 20% of the world's population in 2030. Regarding urbanization, it is important to highlight that although today Africa is still the least urbanized region in the world, it is experiencing an extremely fast rate of urbanization. By 2030, it is expected that half of the African population will be living in cities. Parce que il y a chacun a son activité à faire au village là-bas, comme on ne peut pas faire là-bas, parce que c'est ici maintenant il y a un peu de l'argent. Si on vient ici se siéger ici pour faire des activités, on trouve au moins de, de l'argent pour au moins nous satisfaire. C'est pourquoi. However, for the moment, jobs are not expanding enough to meet the needs of the people, and urban governments find it impossible to expand the stock of housing, infrastructures, and services, leaving 72% of urban inhabitants living in slums. In fact, according to the African Economic Outlook, slum population will triple by 2030. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development has a clear goal, to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. Africa, though, faces the largest challenge to meet this goal. Currently, 36% of the African population lives in extreme poverty, with less than 1.25 US dollars a day. However, as African countries grow at around 4.4% per year, the extreme poverty rates are expected to decline only from 36% to 24% by 2030. Will African economies continue growing? According to the Global McKinsey Institute, Africa will become the second fastest growing region in the world, with an annual growth of 4.3% in the next 15 years. GDP per capita will continue to grow, reaching the level where emerging Asia is today. The rapid urban expansion will most likely contribute to rapid growth in consumption by households and business. And the UN estimates that foreign direct investment will quadruple by 2030. African governments will have to put in place policies to diversify their economies to reduce dependence on revenue from commodities. Africa has made significant strides in improving average achievements in education. This improvement has been even more dramatic for girls, with a fourfold increase in the primary completion rates during the last two decades. By 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals want to ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education. However, this goal seems too ambitious as still some 50 million African children still do not have access to primary education. Regarding health, Africa bears the world's heaviest disease burden. Driven by the perversively high prevalence of diseases such as HIV, tuberculosis and malaria, these diseases will only be reduced by 30% in 2030. Climate change is a major and growing threat to global food security, especially in farming communities in sub-Saharan Africa, as it will reduce crop yields and increase high volatility of food prices. The climate change is impacting me as a farmer uh, very hard, very hard, because I can't get green grass my cattle, I, get, I can't get enough fruits to sell to the, to the market, and we have a lot of uh, problem with the drought. The climate is affecting people because they can't plant anything. So we just wait, sit down and wait for the rain to come. 
According to the UN, up to 60 million people will be living in extreme poverty by 2030 as a result of climate change. Climate change will increase the possibility of armed conflict up to 54% by 2030. In addition to that, it will force people to move to less arid or drought-prone areas, creating dramatic human displacements by 2030. Water scarcity, floodings, starvation and agricultural disasters will be one of the main causes of war and displacement within the next 15 years. Hey, welcome to Africa 2030. And here we are with Omar, which is uh, working for MSF. And I want to pose you a question. I believe, unfortunately, there may be more MSF in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, as we were saying before, for 2013. Uh, there are several reasons. It's true that I want to believe that uh, recently you can feel that economic indicators and social indicators of the Sub-Saharan Africa are improving, yet there are certain countries that are um, stuck in certain, in certain so-called chronic uh, uh, crisis, and uh, uh, those uh, uh, do not look like uh, having a solution coming anytime soon. No? So because of the uh, permanence of those uh, uh, chronic crises, uh, uh, you know, the Central African Republic, uh, South Sudan, Somalia, uh, and so on and so forth, I believe that uh, uh, we are going to have to implement more operations as MSF or as a, or humanitarian actors are going to have to uh, work, to keep working. No? That's on the one hand. On the other hand, I, uh, I believe that new episodes of uh, violence Call it Islamic-related uh, violence, uh, call it uh, uh, political violence, uh, uh, or call it uh, simple criminality, are going to produce yet uh, displacement, and they are going to keep uh, uh, prolonging the, uh, the, the poverty that certain countries are experiencing. No? So in that sense, uh, there's going to be a humanitarian response needed. And that's where MSF is going to have to keep on intervening. And then on the third hand, I would say that there are set certain medic uh, epidemics uh, that uh, are far from being solved uh, or from being eradicated. No? I would talk about meningitis, measles, uh, you know, uh, cholera. Those, uh, well, a potential new Ebola, why not, or, or, or any, any other sort of infectious diseases, those are not always easy to prevent, uh, and uh, uh, even though they are, they should be easy to, to, to respond to and to mitigate, uh, that they're not uh, either, no? So, mainly what you have is the, uh, the big pharma companies that are not uh, uh, producing as much uh, vaccines or drugs in general as they should in order to, to attack uh, these, uh, these epidemics. And, uh, and when for this reason, and, and looking at the, and, and how the, uh, the global health response it is in terms of uh, these medical epidemics, I believe that, again, MSF or organizations like MSF are going to have to be uh, working and potentially increasing their operations uh, in Africa. No? So, and then I would add a fourth reason, which is the, uh, the natural growth of uh, many of the humanitarian organizations. No? We keep growing, we keep growing, and then our capacity is allowing us to see more needs where we wouldn't see them in the past. So that is a, a paradox, no? because whereas we should, as we were talking before, let maybe states manage by themselves their own, uh, their own problems, uh, you have, on the other hand, big, big organizations as, as MSF trying to uh, 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 monitor closer and trying to identify more needs, and therefore, paradoxically, rather than letting some governments uh, develop by themselves, they may be condemning uh, uh, this uh, local development with, with a good willingness, no? but it's, uh, it's uh, collateral damage that, uh, that the humanitarian action can have. So that would be another fourth reason why I believe that MSF is going to be bigger or could potentially be bigger in 2030. So not only climate change, but also violent extremism will continue to fuel conflict with important transnational dimensions. Ambam, Wajay, Yako, Ambam, Avinti, 
The approach to threaten Nigeria's neighbours, turning raids into their territory. The coalition is now focused on the level of surveillance. International involvement by UN peacekeeping operations will be sustained, and an increasing role will be played by the African Union forces under the umbrella of the new African Peace and Security Architecture. Uh, the peacekeeping missions, um, there's very few of them that have been uh, success, success, successful no? in the last uh, years. You have uh, uh, missions that are uh, becoming eternal, like the ones uh, in Darfur, in Congo, uh, potentially in Central African Republic, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et um, you know, I, I believe that nowadays those are ill-perceived because more and more there is a, a political agenda behind those interventions, whereas in theory that there should be a, 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 a pure uh, uh, humanitarian and stabilization role. But more and more, you have an intention from the uh, from the United Nations or from these specific missions to um, address holistically, humanitarian, uh, uh, political, and development uh, objectives. No? Here, Veronica Ochim is washing clothes for her family. She fled fighting and helicopter attacks to reach the UN facility. Regarding politics. Young Africans are struggling with unemployment and the absence of civil liberties. Political instability, bad governance and failed neoliberal social and economic policies have exacerbated long-standing societal problems. Protests will rise as a response to the political marginalization and the economic and social pressures they suffer. Civil society movements as such, will continue increasing by 2030 in order to break barriers and bring about change. In the following years, African voices will continue to rise in the pursuit of political change and democratic elections. Social media, in addition, is expanding at explosive rates on the African continent and as such, cyber activism will play a key role in civil participation and mobilization. Regarding international relations, Africa will gain centrality in the globalized international relations scene in the following years. First of all, its integration process through the African Union will continue, deepening and expanding to more and more areas of cooperation due to the spillover effect. A possible future scenario envisages even the creation of an African space of free movement of people, goods and capital that would entail a huge transformation for the continent. Regarding the relations with other major powers, Africa will keep its attractiveness for geopolitical reasons. First, it will continue to be a battlefield for the global war on terror, driven by the US. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Duty in Djibouti. I'm Tech Sergeant John Ledoux. Secondly, the EU will get increasingly involved in migration issues outsourcing immigration control to African countries. And thirdly, we can foresee a never increasing presence in the continent of emerging powers, especially China, but also India and Brazil. These countries will continue to feel attracted by African natural resources, market size and the possibility to gain diplomatic allies in multilateral institutions. Finally, Africa 2030 will be for better or for worse, one of the pioneer scenarios to test the effects of a globalization in which transnational actors and forces play an increasingly important role. From multinational corporations and international organizations to NGOs and social movements, non-state actors will be decisive in shaping how Africa will look like in 2030.